Did you sign up for the environmental fair? Miss Geist. Geist! Hi, girls. Did you sign up for the environmental fair? How would I describe Miss Geist? Um, I think she's charming in a very unassuming way. She combs the front of her hair, but doesn't comb the back of her hair because she can't remember to. And doesn't think it's important because nobody's really going to look at the back of your head. But she, she's kind and I think she's got a, a deep heart. And she's so dear and sweet and innocent and pure. Amy Heckerling and I worked together for about two decades, a little over. And at that point in time, we had been talking about the script she was writing, which was sensational. And she had told me that Miss Geist was a teacher of hers when she was in school. And that she always had her slip hanging and always had like a pencil in her hair and never combed her hair. But she loved the teacher because she was so sweet and unassuming. Well, she went to school at, you know, Beverly Hills High and um, picked up some of the um, lingo that the kids used. And then when we were auditioning people, Amy would ask them some questions or listen to their dialogue and she'd remember every word from anybody on the set that said something interesting or used, you know, a word that she could repeat, um, you know, for the language that was so unique and clueless. Kudos to Amy Heckerling because this, this, this movie that she wrote and directed was so amazing and put every one of us actors in the stratosphere because of it. And she's so loved. And so, if the government could just get to the kitchen, rearrange some things, we could certainly party with the Hadians. It was like Amy actually wrote Alicia Silverstone this part because that is Cher. There's no one in the world that could have played this role because she was so beautiful and so naively approachable and so kind and funny. And that's why Clueless stands today because of all the characters. I mean, Paul Rudd was so adorable, and he's adorable to this day. And uh, Stacey Dash, she was had so much charisma and chemistry with Cher. They were amazing together. And Stacey brought that rougher edge to it, you know, the one-liner. And Ty, darling sweet Ty, when she was in the auditions, she would sit on the floor with us. She was so adorable. We kept her in the room for other people's auditions because she was just delicious. Such a sweet girl. And the guys were all amazing. I mean, Donald with that energy, so much energy. I think he still has it today. And like three pieces of licorice. <gasps> oh my God, look, is that a photo op or what? Mr. Hall and Miss Geist, I think their love story was really pure. You know, they were a little square. They believed in what they were doing. They loved the kids at school. And I think both of them were really lonely. And when they found each other, it completed them. And it was genuinely kind of pulling your heartstrings. Well, Wally was the sweetest, kindest, charming man I think I've ever known. He is so approachable and giving. I always consider you my, my husband, Wally. The one amazing thing about Clueless is you can watch it over and over and over and the lines still resonate and the jokes and it's still relevant today. The last time I saw it, there was a line when um, Cher was leaving the party and her father called and said, you know, you better get home. He was very angry at her. And he said, do you know what time it is? Hello? Do you know what time it is? A watch doesn't really go with this outfit, Daddy. And she said, Daddy, a watch doesn't go with this outfit. 
And it was just so sweet and naive. She, she could deliver it with her um, intonations that, you know, it was, she was amazing, amazing. And when we see each other, it's fantastic. I talked to Stacy, um, Alicia, I talked to, uh, I was just at her house for Passover. <laughs> and Amy, Amy just directed me in something, which was so much fun. Oh, fans are amazing. They're really amazing. Uh, to be remembered after all this time and to kind of be loved in a way, it, it humbles me so much because you know, when, when I was playing Miss Geist, my soul was on the edge. I, I, I did love her, you know, when she was opening the note and she didn't know who sent it to her and somebody liked her, they really did. And it just, it moves me to think that I would move anybody or that they would like me that much. It really makes me feel so good. What a great time in life. And you know, it was so, pure and happy and you know the jokes were amazing but it was a time where everyone you know all the characters loved each other they were real friends and they were um, rooting for each other that's what's so wonderful about Clueless it was happy and I think you get happy when you when you watch it because it's it's there's no enemy there's no bad guy. If I could imagine where Miss, Miss Geist would be now, I think she and Mr. Hall would lead a very simple life. He probably had a lot of hobbies that were really interesting. Um, astronomy, stamp collecting, and I think Miss Geist would probably be adopting animals. Maybe, you know, they'd have like three dogs um, that didn't shed. But I think they have a beautiful, happy life and a lot of friends where they sit around a table Friday night and eat and have a drink and talk about politics and so, you know, social things. And they're, they're very relevant. That's what I think.